Tashkent, Uzbekistan. What comes to your mind when you hear these words? For some, it's bazaars, oriental mystique, plov, or something else along those lines. For others, it's practically nothing, as many have never even heard of the place. While the bazaars, the plov, and all that is really there, what may come as a surprise is that the capital of Uzbekistan is also a veritable museum of some of the best that Soviet architecture had to offer including a local variation of a very peculiar style called Soviet Modernism. The city itself is very old, with nearly 3,000 years of recorded history, but practically nothing remains of the past after an earthquake in 1966 flattened pretty much everything. Afterwards, people from all over the Soviet Union descended on the ruins and helped rebuild Tashkent basically from scratch. What resulted was a somewhat planned city, a bit similar to Brasilia, with the typical wide Soviet boulevards and massive open spaces, as well as a very interesting architectural character. Basically, a mixture of Stalinist constructions that survived the quake and an experimental style that was born during the reconstruction. This new style was a local twist on Soviet modernism known by most as Tashkent modernism, while some even refer to it as seismic modernism. It's essentially a Soviet brutalist architectural style mixed with Central Asian motifs. That's a cool building. It's famous as well. That's where I got my SIM card. Let's see if they can fix my issue. The hot spot. Before we get into the Soviet modernist style, first let's take a look at its historical predecessor, the so-called Stalinist architecture, of which Tashkent also has some fine examples. This is that kind of old Soviet architecture that you can see in all the Soviet, former Soviet countries that is actually nice. And there's a really nice inner courtyard here. People really like bananas here. Interesting to know the history of this building. They have like these grapes on the wall. Perhaps the most iconic example of Tashkent modernism is the famous Hotel Uzbekistan. Built in 1974, until very recently it was the only luxury hotel in the country. It was designed specifically to receive large groups such as participants in international competitions and conferences as Tashkent was becoming increasingly important during that time as the Soviet Union's showcase city of the East. A nice piece of Soviet architecture. It looks better from far away, this pattern and the shape of the hotel. When you get close to it, you see that it's pretty run down. But if they fix it up, it's cool. And it used to be the symbol of the city for a very long time. This was the only or one of the only five-star hotels the city used to have. And it's right in the middle, like literally in the middle of the city. The 
Right next to this hotel is another interesting building that is actually very new, but is built in a style that is typical of Tashkent. It is the Palace of International Forums, which is the main concert hall in the country. It was built in 2009, and in it you can clearly see the influence of Tashkent modernism with its simplistic grandiosity and combination of local motifs with a desire to be international. There's another nice government building on Not sure what it is. But I like this architecture. It's pretty cool. I gotta stop somewhere and drink this thing. the big boulevards but there's no traffic tell Uzbekistan behind me man I want to know what this building is it's got that Persian Sun symbol in the corners those columns are typical of Uzbekistan and it's got the two storks on top which is also sort of a national symbol it's got these nice wooden doors. And some hot shot is arriving. And here is Amir Timur. Downtown Tashkent is just filled with very nice examples of Soviet architecture, whether that is the older pre-earthquake Stalinist or modernist. In general, the center of the city feels very Soviet as opposed to the perimeter that is more traditional. Yeah, just once again, look, you see on the corner you have the local style combined with this Soviet architecture. I think that works really well. And this is like that typical Soviet Boulevard with the tall trees you know these wide walking streets and it's completely shaded in the summer this is what the center is like I've said this before but I want to reiterate Pleasant buildings here. If you own a place here, I'm sure you're doing pretty well. I've seen people swim in this like old walruses. And one of them told me, yeah, he swims here all year. Like one of those, you know. That braves the elements no matter what. Yeah, man, those apartments, it's really nice to have a place here to look out on the river. It's always a little bit cooler here. Big windows. This is, again, that nice Soviet architecture. city has some elements of this nicer Soviet architecture, which I did not really see in Bishkek, for example. This pavement, the quality of it, 
and kind of like I don't know the way it's laid out it reminds me of Bucharest this this area in general with the trees it's so similar to the parks in Bucharest man this river flows pretty fast I was in Tashkent at the end of November 2023 and I got very lucky with the weather. Here I am walking in the center around the area between Navoyi and Islam Karimov Street. Yeah, what I like is that these ministerial buildings, they have a bit of the you know, local architecture infused with with modern with the modern style, like that building right there. You can see on the corners this local design. The shapes are incorporating local style, and I think these were built like not recently. Maybe in Soviet times. But it's cool that they do it. It's not that bad. It looks a little cheap when you get close. The materials are, you know, not that good. But at least it's not the boring box like this one. Yeah. Like even this building. It, this is press club. Hulk Kara Hulk is the people. So the People's Press Club. This is some official building. Yeah, the materials are crap. But the design is not bad. You know? So that's that's a that's a positive. And this whole area is filled with these kind of buildings. It's just impossible to walk in. It'd be a good idea to actually get one of these um, scooter things. Then I could really cruise around, but I'm not sure how to pay for it with my card. I, don't know. I forgot to check it out yesterday when I was at home. That's another governmental building, also with the local flair. There's another one, if that can be seen. That's Luke Oil, actually. There's the Humo Arena. Yeah, so this, they, they, they do this well incorporating traditional style into these buildings that's good But let's get back to Soviet modernism. Another well-known example of this style is the Turkistan Palace, aka the Turkistan Concert Hall on Navoyi Boulevard. First built in 1977 and then reconstructed in the early days of independence, it used to be the main concert hall in the country until 2009 when the previously seen Palace of International Forms was inaugurated. This, 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 this is so Soviet. This, I don't know what this stone is, but it looks like crap. It's everywhere. And it's in Bishkek as well, and they love it. And it looks so low quality. And by the way, this building, it looks much worse close up. But it could be rebuilt. 
like renovated and keep the style and it's very nice. I like this style that they have. From here, I took a long walk down Navoi Boulevard towards the Hadra district and along the way, I found a lot of interesting Soviet architectural specimens, mainly of the Stalinist or classicist style. And yet another example, also some kind of governmental building, Ministry of Health, not Ministry of Health. Sarlikne Saklash Vazirli. I guess today is the day of Tashkent modernism. I just noticed they have these boxes for the air conditioning. That's a that's a very positive step to realize that. The air conditioners ruin the facade of the building. It's pretty good. I didn't notice that before. This building is like kind of cool as well. It's one of those. With a cool courtyard. Let's check it out. like a mausoleum it doesn't say anything
two of the finest examples of Tashkent modernism can be found right next to each other at the corner of Sharaf Rashidov and Madbuwa Chilar streets. The Museum of History, formerly the Lenin Museum, and the National Information Agency or Uz A building with its interesting clock tower, formerly housing the publisher of the Communist Party, were built five years apart in 1970 and 1975 respectively. There it is, Uza. I'm not sure what it is, but this one is also some kind of a, a famous building. It's a museum of something. Tarihi Davlat. I guess Davlat is state and Tarihi, I don't know. But this is another, well, both of them are, again, of this. Maybe it's called modernism, Soviet modernism. Buildings that incorporate the local style with Soviet architecture. Yeah, it was the State Museum of History. My favorite street to walk down in Tashkent has got to be Shota Rustaveli. Named after a famous Georgian poet, this long boulevard is filled with restaurants and cafes, as well as some very fine examples of Soviet architecture, mostly in the classicist style. Daniels from Paris. <laughs> I guy just took some Masvar. Yeah, these are nice buildings too. I think this was the Turkish spot. Yeah, Turetsky restaurant. Yeah, it's still open, but it looks like. It has fallen on tough times. It looked better a year and a half ago. And then I, re I remember this Sofia. Well, look at this building, it looks totally European. And this whole little part of the street, it's very European. It's a nice little cafe. Like, this is the best part of the street. Tim's coffee. I remember this post office thing. I don't know what this is, but... That's pretty good. On the corner of Nukus and Amir Timur, you can find what may be the prettiest building in the whole city. Unfortunately, I don't know the background of the construction, but it really stands out and is definitely not new. So this is Amir Timur, man. I like these buildings on the corner. It's very interesting. I don't know if there's any history to it, but it's not new. And it's not, I don't know, it's not really a local style. valuable property here and that building on the corner looks interesting as well I, think I heard something about this some blogger was talking about it
Across the street, you can find a building with a very Soviet name, the Palace of Culture of Railway Workers. It was built in 1938, meaning it is classicist or Stalinist, and the building is part of a bigger complex that is a cultural center and includes a cinema, the Museum of Railways, and facilities connected to the railway unions. Cultural, cultural Palace of Railway Workers. building and there's a whole like courtyard leaving the most exemplary ones for last let's start with Charsu Bazaar the bazaar itself is ancient going back many centuries but the iconic turquoise dome covered in Central Asian patterns is quite new Designed in 1980 and constructed in 1988, only three years before the Soviet Union collapsed, it is definitely the last of the Mohicans when it comes to Tashkent modernism. Here I am inside the dome, looking for a deal on cumin and barberries. By the way, even though the bazaar is a tourist attraction, it remains the most popular market for locals, with good prices and the best selection on everything. Zira and Barbaris, 20,000 he said. How do I get out of here? 20,000 for 100 grams. 20,000 grams. So I want it for 10,000. Let's see what I can do. I have separate vlogs on this channel on my adventures in Tashkent, which includes going to many different bazaars where you can see all of this and much more in more detail. <laughs> There's nobody there. I'll go back to this guy and be like, listen. Having begun with Hotel Uzbekistan, it is only fitting to wrap it up with the other symbol of the city, the TV Tower of Tashkent. Built in 1981, it features an observation deck, a rotating restaurant, and a small museum of sorts. Since these kinds of things are not my cup of tea, I never did go inside, but in any case, I think this monument is best observed from a distance, which is not hard to do since it's 375 meters tall and it protrudes into the Tashkent skyline like some kind of hybrid between a space age minaret and a 1980s style Soviet rocket. Getting close to the restaurant. It's just after this place. You can go up this thing. There's a restaurant there where the flag colors are on that level. I've seen people inside, it looks pretty boring. I'm not really interested in going there. But this thing is it's pretty massive when you walk next to it. I don't know if the camera can show it, but yeah, it's huge. In conclusion, let me say that obviously this is not everything. There are plenty more examples of interesting Soviet architecture, modernist and other, that I did not manage to visit this time around. The metro itself, which I did visit, is also part of this legacy of Tashkent modernism, but filming there is a bit difficult 
and I did not see all the stations. What I would like to highlight is that I think it is very commendable that even some of the buildings constructed after 91 carry the legacy of Soviet modernism in the sense that they try to combine the local style with universal trends, something that is lately completely missing in most other countries, the perfect example being Dubai, a city whose modern buildings lack a local character. That being said, unfortunately, I also noticed that the brand new buildings that are being constructed left and right at the moment are not following this idea and are the usual bland glass and steel boxes that have become the architectural monoculture all over the world. I do hope that after the dust of the big building boom settles and all the hot shots made the money they wanted, they will go back to being at least as creative as they were in the recent past when freedom of expression was supposedly less tolerated.